Kara, you lazy daughter. What have you done to my beautiful carpet? How dare you touch it with your contemptible dirty hands? That's just unacceptable. Don't you know that? Oh, hey Pat. I see you're really passionate about your carpet. I apologize if I upset you. I was just trying to help out with cleaning the house, and I thought giving the carpet a little wash would be a nice touch. What's wrong with cleaning your carpet anyways? Don't you know the amount of money I had to pay to get it? It's much more pricey than the monthly salary of your entire household. I've mentioned it before. This carpet is really expensive, so it needs to be treated with extra care. I even told you to use a special washing powder for it. But it seems like you didn't bother listening to a single word I said, right? Look, I'm sorry if I didn't use the special washing powder. I must have forgotten about it at the moment. But I genuinely didn't realize how valuable the carpet was to you. Maybe next time, you could remind me beforehand about its special care requirements. That way, I'll make sure to follow your instructions. Sorry? Again? What the hell are you talking about? Do you think that just with your sorry, I'll be happy to forgive you? Well, my son may do that, but I'm not like him. Just look at what you've done with my luxurious carpet. It's nothing but a stupid rag. And now you're saying sorry? How ridiculous is that? Pat, you're being too much. I can't believe you can make a mountain out of a molehill like that. I washed your filthy carpet, and now you're scolding me for doing it? I had to take a whole day off work to do the chores for you. And for what? Just because you have a guest coming over today? I feel like I'm being your free me. Can't you see it? Oh, please, Kara. All of these jobs are just too trivial compared to your responsibility as a mother-in-law. I don't force you to do anything heavy, so why don't you just shut your mouth and contribute something to this family? And taking a day off is not something that serious. Seriously, Pat? You're comparing my work to David's? He's leading a team at his company. Of course, he works every day. But look at yourself. You're just a stupid superior staff. One day off work won't damage this house just a little bit. It's clear to see that your work isn't that important to us. <laughs> oh, here we go with the comparisons again. It's not about who has a more important job. It's about you showing some appreciation for the effort I put into maintaining this household. And as for knowing my place and behaving like an obedient daughter-in-law, that's quite that outdated expectation, don't you think? Uh, do you ever stop complaining? Your constant whining about appreciation is getting old, Kara. Maybe if you actually did something significant, I would show some appreciation. But all you do is run around pretending to be helpful while accomplishing absolutely nothing. I can't believe you're dismissing all the things I do to make our lives easier. I manage the household, take care of the kids, and handle countless tasks every day. Just because I don't have a fancy job title doesn't mean my work is insignificant. Oh, please. Your so-called countless tasks are nothing more than basic responsibilities that any capable adult should handle. Don't act like you're some kind of hero for doing what you're supposed to do. It's not about being a hero, Pat. It's about recognizing and respecting the effort it takes to keep this house running smoothly. And as for your comment about me not being enough to stay in this house, that's a low blow. I thought we were partners, supporting each other, not tearing each other down. Partners? Ha! Huh. More like a burden. You think you're contributing something significant, but in reality, you're just another way dragging me down. Your efforts are a drop in the ocean, Kara, and they'll never be enough to save you from your own mediocrity. That's incredibly hurtful, Pat. I'm doing my best to juggle everything and make our lives better. But it seems like no matter how hard I try, you're always ready with a criticism or a snide remark. It's exhausting and demoralizing. Well, maybe if you actually did something worthwhile, I wouldn't have to criticize. You're always looking for praise and appreciation. But what have you really done to deserve it? 
Your work is forgettable and disposable, just like you. I can't believe you're saying this thanks to me. I thought we were a team, supporting and uplifting each other. But all I'm hearing from you is negativity and belittlement. Is this really the kind of relationship we want to have? Maybe it's time you face reality, Kara. Your work is insignificant, and you need to accept that. If you want appreciation, then start doing something that actually matters. Until then, don't expect me to pat you on the back for every mundane task complete. You know what, Pat? I'm tired of trying to prove my worth to you. I don't need your validation. I'll continue doing my best to run this household and take care of our family. But I won't let your demeaning words define me. Fine. Well, I don't even give a damn about that anyway. Hey, Kara. Why do you look so upset? Is there something wrong with you? Nah, nothing wrong. I mean, everything's just going fine. It's just that... What's that? Are you worrying about something? Let me guess. It's my mom, isn't it? How did you know about that? Well, I just had a hunch, you know? My mom has a way of making people feel small, especially if she has some kind of issue with them. So when I noticed you were sad about something, I couldn't help but think it might be related to her. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. She's been on a mission to make me feel like I'm not good enough. It's like she can stand the fact that I came from a different background and she uses that against me. That's really unfair, Kara. No one should be judged based on their family background. It's not about where you come from, it's about who you are as a person. And from what I've seen, you're amazing. Thank you, David. It means a lot to hear you say that. But it's difficult when someone you cared about, like your mom, constantly belittles and insults you. It hurts, you know? I can only imagine how hurtful that must be, Kara. It's tough when someone close to you doesn't see your worth and tries to bring you down. But remember, their opinions don't define you. You're strong and capable, and you shouldn't let anyone make you doubt yourself. I appreciate your support, David. It's reassuring to have someone who understands and stands by me. But it's still hard not to let her words get to me sometimes. I completely understand, Kara. It's not easy to brush off hurtful comments, especially when they come from someone you're supposed to have a close relationship with. But try to remember that her behavior says more about her than it does about you. You're better than the negativity she throws your way. You're right, David. I shouldn't let her negativity define me. I'll try my best to rise above it and focus on the positive aspects of my life. You're really my savior. When I am at my worst, you're always here by my side. Unlike you, your mother always finds a way to drag me down and say bad things about my family. I hear you, Kara. Living with my mom can be challenging at times, and I understand that it's been taking a toll on you. It's not fair for you to feel like you don't belong in your own home. Yeah, it's been really tough. I feel like I'm constantly walking on eggshells around her, trying to avoid conflict. It's exhausting, and it's affecting my overall well-being. I just want a peaceful and harmonious living environment. I completely understand, Kara. No one should have to feel like they're walking through a minefield in their own home. It's important for both of us to feel comfortable and supported here. Exactly! I want this to be a place where we both can feel at ease and be ourselves. It's not healthy for our relationship or our own individual happiness if we're constantly stressed out and on edge. I understand your concerns, Kara. It's natural to worry about how my mom might react to the idea of us moving out. But at the end of the day, our happiness and well-being should be the priority. If moving to a new place would alleviate the stress and give us more freedom to pursue our own plans, then it's definitely something worth considering. You're right, David. Our happiness should come first. And if moving to a new place means we can create a more peaceful and fulfilling life together, then it's a step we should seriously think about taking. It's just that I didn't want to cause any conflict or strain in your relationship with your mom. 
I appreciate your consideration, Kara. But it's important for both of us to prioritize our own needs and goals. And if living in a different environment will contribute to our overall well-being, then it's a conversation we should have. We can approach it with understanding and explain our reasons to my mom. I'm glad we're on the same page, David. It's comforting to know that you're supportive of this idea. I've been dreaming of a place that truly feels like our own, where we can create a positive and nurturing environment. It'll be a fresh start for both of us. I share that dream with you, Kara. I want us to have a space that reflects our personalities and allows us to pursue our own plans and dreams. Moving to a new place would give us the freedom to design our lives the way we envision them. Without any unnecessary stress or interference. It's exciting to think about the possibilities, David. We can find a place that suits our needs and preferences, where we can truly feel at home. We'll have the chance to create new memories and build a future together. Free from the negativity and limitations we currently experience. Absolutely, Kara. Moving to a new place will open doors for us and give us the opportunity to grow and thrive as a couple. We'll have more control over our environment and the freedom to make choices that align with our own aspirations. It's a step towards building the life we've always wanted. I'm feeling more optimistic about that idea, David. The thought of having our own space, where we can focus on our dreams and aspirations, is truly empowering. Let's create a place of our own. Together, we can make this dream a reality. I couldn't agree more, Kara. Let's embark on this journey together, hand in hand. We'll find a place that feels like home and create the life we've always imagined. I'm excited for the new chapter we're about to begin. Me too, David. With your love and support, I know we can overcome any challenges and create a future filled with happiness and fulfillment. I'm happy to have a caring husband like you, David. And I'm always grateful for that. What the hell are you doing right now, Kara? You're being lazy again, aren't you? That's just unacceptable. You've lived in this house for like more than three years now, and you still didn't learn anything on how to be a nice daughter-in-law. Ugh, you're just nothing but a stupid parasite. Whoa, hold up, Pat. Seriously? Can we talk about this without all the name-calling and accusations? I mean, we're family here, right? What's with all the hostility? Oh, please, spare me the act. I've had enough of your laziness and lack of concentration. It's about time someone called you out on it. Look, Pat, I get that you're frustrated, but can we have a civil conversation instead of resorting to insults? You're being ridiculous, don't you know that? Fine. Go ahead and play the victim card, but I'm not falling for it. You've always had a knack for making the bad guy. It's getting old, Kara. I'm not trying to play the victim, Pat. I just want you to understand how your words and actions affect me. It hurts when you constantly show your disgust towards me. Can we find a way to communicate without all this negativity? Okay. So now you're trying to twist things around and make it seem like I'm the bad guy here. Typical. Just admit it, Kara. You're not as innocent as you make yourself out to be. I'm not twisting anything. I'm simply expressing how your actions made me feel. And don't you remember what you've done to me? You threw dirty water on me while I was cleaning your living room. And even worse, you did it in front of all your guests. It was humiliating. Can you imagine how embarrassed I was? What? Now I'm the one to blame, aren't I? You're really good at turning things around, aren't you? <laughs> I can't believe that my daughter-in-law could be so ungrateful to me. Listen, I have all the right to do that to you. If you hadn't broken that cup, I wouldn't have made a fuss about it, don't you think? Pat, I'm not trying to be ungrateful. All I'm asking is for you to consider how your actions impact those around you. We're family, 
and it's important to treat each other with respect and understanding. Oh, of course. How could I forget the first day you came into this house? You didn't know anything except creating troubles. And guess what? I tolerated all of it. How silly I was back then. I should have done this to you long time ago. Ugh, you just never learn. Pat, we've all had our learning curves when adjusting to new situations. It's not fair to hold on to past mistakes and use them against me. Let's focus on the present and finding ways to improve our relationship. Well, now I see things clearly. I won't be making the same mistakes again. I'll do what's best for me and this family. And first of all, I'll have to teach you how to behave. Teaching me how to behave? Pat, I'm an adult capable of making my own decisions and choices. I'm open to learning and growing, but it has to be a two-way street. We both need to be willing to understand and respect each other. Oh, look at you, standing up for yourself. How amusing. But let me tell you, insulting you in front of the guests may be a suitable solution to dealing with a stubborn woman like you. Well, and I don't feel any guilt here. All I do is for the sake of my son and this family. There's nothing I have to feel guilty about. And just mark that as your lesson, Kara. Don't make me repeat this, because next time, it won't be dirty water. <laughs> what? I can't believe you could be that heartless. Everyone is gossiping about me all around the room. Are you happy now? Why do you have to resort to such things? Do you want to make fun of me? Humiliate me? You'll only be happy if I leave your house, right? You're the most brutal person I've ever met in the whole world. Yeah, I'm that kind of mother-in-law. So what? Are you gonna sue me or something? <laughs> I'm not afraid of you. Sure about that? Okay, then fine. Don't blame me for being cold to you. I'll make you pay for all of this. Mark my words. I'll never forgive you for what you've done to me. Mom, seriously, how could you do that to Kara? I did what? What are you talking about? Come on, Mom, don't blame dumb. You know exactly what you did. I can't believe you would treat her that badly. What did she ever do to deserve that treatment? You literally threw dirty water on her while she was just trying to clean the room. And to make matters worse, you did it in front of the guests. Look, David, I might have lost my temper, but it's not like she's completely innocent here. I just wanted to teach her a lesson for being so lazy. You won't believe it. When my guests came over, she was just lying on the sofa, watching TV. I can't tolerate this attitude anymore. Mom, I understand that you might be frustrated, but insulting her or humiliating her in front of others isn't the solution. We need to find a way to address our concerns without resorting to mean-spirited actions. I have been so lenient with her lately, and it's time for her to change her mindset and become a more responsible and obedient daughter-in-law. I'm doing this for your benefit too, David. Therefore, I expect a thank you instead of you questioning my actions. Wait a minute, Mom. Are you saying that all these things you're doing are actually for my benefit? Are you sure about that? Or is it just about what you want? It seems like you always look down on her, and that's not fair. What? Are you blaming everything on your mother? Well, you should not. How dare you say that to your own mother? That's not something you could say to that woman that raised you. And who did I have to do all of this for? It's you! She even forced you to move out. See? She's luring you into leaving me, leaving this family behind to go and be her slave. You're being tricked into her trap. Wake up, David. You'll realize how stupid you are. Seriously, Mom, cut it out. Let me make this crystal clear. 
When you mess with my wife, you're messing with me too. I won't ever forgive you for what you've done. And just so you know, I have evidence of you hitting my wife. It's all captured on my phone. Maybe you don't know, but I installed a secret camera just recently. That's how I found out that you could be so heartless. Kara and I are going to take legal action and sue you for everything you've put us through. You're going to pay for your actions. And it won't be pleasant. Wait, what? You're actually planning to sue me? This is unbelievable. What the hell are you thinking? Mom, I've had enough. It's time to put an end to this toxic behavior. Hitting someone, especially your own family member, is completely unacceptable. We can't just let it slide. We need to stand up for ourselves and seek justice. I can't believe you would go these lengths. We're family, David. Family should stick together, no matter what. This lawsuit idea is absurd. I understand that we're family, but that doesn't mean we should tolerate abusive behavior. We deserve to be treated with respect and dignity. By taking legal action, we're not only standing up for ourselves, but we're also wanting to say that such actions won't be tolerated. I never thought it would come to this. I never intended to cause harm or hurt anyone. I was just frustrated and lost control of my emotions. I'm truly sorry for what I've done. Well, spare me your remorse. I'll never listen to any words you say. You're not my mom. You're a monster. You're trying to ruin my family, aren't you? So then, I'll just inform Dad about everything you have done. He'll be really furious. You'll see. David, please. I'm begging you to find it in your heart to forgive me. I never wanted to cause harm or hurt anyone, especially not my own family. I'm filled with deep regret and sorrow for the pain I've caused. I know that asking for forgiveness is not enough, but it's a sincere plea from the please don't say anything to your dad. He'll kick me out of the house. Forgiveness is a complex process and it takes time to heal from the wounds that have been inflicted. I want to believe that you genuinely regret your actions, but trust needs to be rebuilt. Don't even beg for anything from me. It's you who created this mess, so just take responsibility for your own actions. You've made the bed, now lie in it. David, I can't bear the thought of our family being torn apart because of my terrible mistake. I know I've let you down, but I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make amends. I'll go to therapy, attend anger management classes, Anything that will help me gain better control over my emotions. Please, give me a chance to show you that I can change. Mom, it's not just about changing for the sake of avoiding legal consequences. It's about truly understanding the gravity of your actions and the pain they caused. And what you've done is being too much. But no, Kara and I have had enough of your unreasonable attitude. This time... We made up our mind to make you realize your fault and pay your price. Don't even text me. We'll cut ties with you from now on. Miss Kara, prepare for your miserable life. We're done for now. Goodbye forever. No, you can't treat me like this. David, David. After I showed the video and told David's father, who had been going on behind the scenes with me, and Mrs. Pat, his father was deeply shocked and disappointed. As previously mentioned, he came rushing to me. He apologized over and over again for what Mrs. Pat did, even though he didn't do anything wrong. After some discussions, David's father decided to get a divorce. They'd been married for a long time, but that only meant that he had time to notice some red flags in the relationship. He stayed married for David's sake, but after what happened, he finally decided it was time to get divorced. And as a result, Mrs. Pat lost her husband, her son, and was kicked out of her house. However, things didn't end there. Two days later, Mrs. Pat had to receive a 10-year sentence for committing violence and harassment. Well, 10 years should be long enough for her to reconsider all of her crimes. David and I stayed in the house with his dad. And after all that happened, we could finally greet our first child together. Needless to say, she was really pretty. 
From then on, we lived a happy life with each other. And I'm totally content about that.